what's going on guys and welcome to your 21st CSS tutorial ah, I missed HTML oh I'm sorry HTML uh, let's do it again so welcome everyone to your 21st HTML and CSS tutorial and in this tutorial we'll be looking at CSS properties so in the last tutorial what we learned forgot actually yeah so in the last tutorial we learned about classes and IDs in HTML and now let's make use of those and do some interesting stuff so let's say I have a div right here div, div class mm, ABC and let's say I am a styled sentence uh, let's create a simple div with no class and say I am styled to uh, now down here let's first of all apply some styles on the div so now this since this is we are only using div then even though this has got a class but since uh, technically this is also is a div so these styles will also apply to this div so now let's uh, write some styles and the main purpose of this tutorial is for CSS properties so let's look at those carefully so first CSS property we have here is the color one and color would technically set a color to every div or your selector you selected inside these style tags so color could not only be words but could also be a hexadecimal value or your RGB values and by that what I mean is your hexadecimal values uh, are from I don't know it's from like zero 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 and from mm, uh, I have no idea basically it's like yeah so mm, I think that they are from six zeros to six F but do confirm that because I guess yeah I'm right so this is from black to white and the hexadecimal would include all the colors in between so let's say I want to give it a hexadecimal value of color white so what I'll do is I'll write a hash symbol which detonates a detonates whoa it should be denotes isn't it so let's do it again oh I just did it again two times in this tutorial so never mind let's do it again so the hash symbol denotes an ID in your CSS selectors but right here it says that I am not a word but I am a hexadecimal value so now we have div of color white uh, let's give a body a dark color so that these divs are visible so we'll just do background black so now let's reload this and these two divs are white okay so now let's say I want to apply some different styles to this div so what I'll do is I'll write div dot abc and inside curly braces let's write my own color which I would like to give let's say color yellow and let's reload this and our sentence got highlighted out so that's how you work with classes kind of in CSS uh, let's look at some of the properties which I have got for you the next one it was the background one which I already explained uh, let's take a look on the next property which is the border one now with the help of border you could kinda give a border to your element so that it stands apart from rest of the elements so what we have syntax for border is uh, pretty much like let's say I want to give border to this ABC what I'll do is I'll write border then your unit your type and your color so let's replace these with values and uh, let's say I want the border to be two pixels thick I would like the border to be a solid one and I would like the color to be white so now we have a border which is two pixels thick solid and white for this div right here so now let's reload this 
and as you can see we have got a nice little border around it which is two pixels in thickness is pure white and is a solid border and by a solid border what I mean is we have got a bunch of borders in CSS the solid being is a straight line then we have got a dotted dotted border which would be kind of a dotted one as you can see I can zoom in if you wish to so this is a dotted border and we have got a dashed border dashed and dashed is dashed instead of dotted it is dashed so I hope you got the difference between these two these three basically we have solid dotted and dash and that's how it works so basically it is two pixel dashed white so we can replace this with any color you want just like word colors or hex colors so let's reload this and we've got a yellow border right here and okay so let me tell you that we have two type uh, basically we have three types to give colors uh, in CSS the first one being the word name which is like giving yellow or red or green orange black like that then we have the hexadecimal value which is the hex colors and we give it with a hash sign and the color the technical uh, format of that color and then we have the RGB values now what does RGB signify is RGB it consists of parentheses and in these goes three values which signify the intensity of the colors red green and blue so in computer basically you could make any color using different intensities of red green and blue colors so when you have maximum intensities of all these colors then what you get is is black color and when you have minimum intensities of these colors then what you get is a white color so the values of these uh, arguments varies from 0 0 0 to 255 255 and 255 so go ahead and use your permutations and combinations to find out how many colors we have on our computer so now let's uh, cut this and paste it instead of the value and we don't require any hash right here because we are using the RGB keyword and now let's reload this and there's no change because 255, 255 and 255 signify black color now let's make some fun with it let's say I rename it to let's say 41 so now we have red to maximum intensity blue to maximum intensity but green is 41 so now let's reload this and oh okay so I'm applying it to a div actually uh, that's what I missed out so I should apply it basically to the body so now let's make it 41 and let's reload this and so we have got a pink color uh, in the background by using 41 in the green intensity so now let's make some more amendments and uh, let's say 100 231 and let's say 105 let's see what we got here and we have got this nine nice little green shade so now there's a way to find out colors for these hex and RGB values as well which I'll tell you in the later tutorials uh, we don't have to just hit and trial to get our desired color oh so this should be a one semicolon instead of two so coming to the next property we have text decoration now text decoration would actually be helpful for your kind of underlining your text so let's say text decoration underline so let's reload this and now you can see your text is underlined so traditionally what we used to do is when we are learning basic HTML we did like u tags here and u tag as a closing tag to underline the text 
but when you are king in HTML then you could pretty much do anything without this tag so basically we have recreated this function of this u tag in CSS and we don't need it anymore and similarly let's take a look at opacity in HTML now let's say this uh, kind of looks solid right here it's not transparent that means you could not see this color behind this yellow color so what I'll do is uh, okay so I guess you guys won't understand it this way so I'll make use of a background image so we've got an image right here which looks like dump but it will work so to give a background image what we use is background we make use of the keyword URL and inside the parenthesis we supply a URL of the image to be used as a background image for now it's image.png and let's write image.png right here now we have this image as background of our page now let's reload this oh and okay so yeah so I have zoomed a lot so it kind of looks like jumbled now let's say I want to have this image but I also want in the transparent areas to have the color filled automatically to black and always remember that my image right here is transparent a bit so it's not fully opaque like having white color right here it's kind of transparent and you see these checkboxes because this symbolizes that this image is transparent from these sides and what does that mean is that you could technically fill any color with uh, your background CSS properties in these transparent areas so what I'll do is I'll write background black and a space and the thing we have written earlier so this technically means that okay so you want a background which is black in color but you also want a background having a URL background so this would seem like a dumb idea but when you want to have colors as well with the image you are using if the image is transparent then this is the trick you need so now let's reload this uh, I guess I didn't save it so let's save this uh, let's reload this and we have got a black background with these buttons these big buttons so now so what I was gonna teach you yeah so I was teaching you about opacity so now let's see what opacity is now opacity pretty much makes your elements transparent and by that what I mean is if I give an opacity of div.abc of 0 0.5 now opacities are given from 0, 0.0 which is actually 0 to 1 0.0 which is actually 1 so opacity is like 0 0.1 would be 10% visibility 0 0.2 would be 20% and all the way to 100% would be 1 so it doesn't have any unit because 0 0.5 literally means 50% visibility and let's reload this and as you can see this sentence right here dims a little bit and the reason being is the opacity property we have applied right here to this div.abc so this div.abc now is kind of become transparent as compared to the normal div right here so that's how opacity works and not only with this you could make it use with any other element but remember that opacity applied on the parent would actually be inherited by the child itself so for example if I said I'm a style sentence span and I don't want to be transparent then since we are applying it on the parent the span would automatically have this opacity as 0 0.5 so now let's reload this and as you can see the span 
is not having a opacity of 1 by default and even if you try to have an opacity 1 to this then this would not work now because this is because the opacity applied to ABC the 0 0.1 would be kind of a new opacity to this, this pan element the ch child of this element and it would be create, uh, treated as 1 so the opacity for div.abc which is 0 0.5 is opacity for span as 1 so 0 0.5 is being treated as 1 for this span down here so remember that it's just an additional bonus tip for you guys so now let's move ahead with some other CSS properties and let's take a look at text align and I guess it would be the last one for this tutorial because it's already uh, 16 minutes across now let's take a look let's reload this and we're good to go now let's make use of text align which I was telling you so now right here this text is aligned to the very left of this whole div we, which we can see it in the border let's remove the opacity so it's visible again okay so this text let me see if I want to move this text in the center of the div or in the extreme right of the div then I'll make use of the property text align in CSS now text align would actually help me to align this text in this container so let's say I gave div.apc a text align um, center and remember that center is spelled as c-e-n-t-e-r and uh, not as c-e-n-t-r-e -E. so let's reload this and we have got this text in the center of the container and if I resize this then this automatically adjusts with the width and gets the central position again itself so I guess that's pretty much for this tutorial because it's uh, going long uh, it's already 17 on the clock so I'll see you then in the next tutorial and we'll be continuing this CSS properties thing in the other tutorial as well see you then